Hi, I'm Eric Beard. I just wanted to take a little while to go through a short series here talking about the function of the shoulder girdle and shoulder complex. I'm going to end up building out about five to seven short videos depending on how long I get with some of these areas. In the first video, we're just going to talk about arthrokinematics or joint movements of the shoulder complex. From there, I'll bring up a skeleton and we'll kind of take off the skin from the body. We'll look at some of those same movements. We'll talk about what range of motion we should see at each of those joints. Then we'll talk about muscle function and what muscles are bringing each of those joints through their motion. And that's probably going to take us two or three sessions to get through. And then I'll begin to break up these groups of muscles and how they function throughout the shoulder complex together to give us this wonderful shoulder complex and wonderful shoulder girdle that we have. To begin with, the glenohumeral joint is probably the most common aspect of the shoulder that people are familiar with. Uh, so when we're talking about the glenohumeral joint, if we take the scapula, there's the there's the glenoid fossa and then the head of the humerus from the upper arm attaches into it, it's the glenohumeral joint. And that's what most people are familiar with and that's an important part of the shoulder complex. It is highly mobile, not much stability there. It is worth spending some time on but there are some subtleties around other aspects of the complex that we'll spend time on. But as a review for what we're going to see at the glenohumeral joint, we're going to have flexion, we're going to have extension, we're going to have abduction, we're going to have Adduction, you're going to have internal rotation or medial rotation, external rotation or lateral rotation. You're also going to have some horizontal adduction and some horizontal abduction. Great movements there, high degree of mobility, not much stability, and we're very familiar with that. But there are other aspects of the shoulder complex of girdle that we need to make sure that are aligned and functioning well to allow us to perform high levels of athletic movements or everyday repetitive movements that we might encounter. Let's go ahead and let's explore some of those. Take your right hand. Tap your left collarbone or left clavicle. If you want to take your thumb, bring it right across through there. Uh, I'll come up a little bit closer like that. So the thumb is going to go right in to the sternal clavicular joint. You're going to grab the bone right here on the top. That's going to help you find what's happening. And if you just keep your fingers palpated there and do some small circles with your arm forward, small circles backwards, up, down, rotate, move, you're going to feel some subtle articulations there. This, the, the sternal clavicular joint should be moving. You're going to have some elevation and you're going to have some depression of the sternoclavicular joint uh, when your arm is abducting and adducting. When you're moving in the horizontal plane, when you're horizontally abducting or abducting, you're going to have some protraction as the, as the clavicle moves away from the body and some retraction as it moves backwards. You're also going to have some posterior rotation as your arm's coming up and behind you over here. You're going to have that posterior rotation of the clavicle as well. And then there's going to be, some people call this an anterior rotation or just a return to a neutral position as well. So smaller joint, but very important that we have the clavicle moving correctly because if the clavicle doesn't move correctly, then the other side of the joint is the sternoclavicular joint, but you have your acromioclavicular joint, which is the most commonly separated joint in the shoulder, tends to get thrashed, and there's not as much movement in through there. The acromioclavicular ligament particularly gets pretty beat up as the clavicle joins into the acromion, or that shelf or ridge-like process right here, which is really part of the scapula. That brings us to the scapulothoracic joint. Assuming that the scapula is lined up correctly, these are the major movements that we're going to see, and my hands will just represent my scapula here. You're going to have elevation, you're going to have depression, you're going to have upward rotation, you're going to have downward rotation, you're going to have protraction, and you're going to have retraction. There's also going to be some type of uh, winging, which I can show you right here. When the medial border or inferior angle of the scapula is up off of the thorax, and sometimes you're going to have that tilting or tipping, so my hands were my scapula positioned correctly, they'd be popping up like this. You might have that coracoid process coming forward. So in one of the next videos when we use the skeleton, you might be able to see these subtle joint articulations. But as the scapulothoracic joint movements moves, you're going to dictate some of the function and alignment of the rest of the shoulder complex. Same thing uh, throughout the rest of the complex. So we've got this am amazing shoulder, gir shoulder girdle with a high degree of mobility and a low degree of stability. The scapulothoracic joint isn't even a true joint. It's really kind of a false joint where there are just muscles holding in place as, as opposed to a true bony articulation. But just some things to keep in mind when we're talking about the shoulder function, we're not just talking about the glenohumeral joint. We've got the scapulothoracic joint, the acromioclavicular joint. I'm sorry, I didn't say scapulothoracic. Uh, We've got the sternoclavicular joint, we've got the acromioclavicular joint, and then we've got the scapulothoracic joint as well that must move in unison. And the body is amazing, and if you take away movement at one of these, it will cause movement somewhere else. And that's what tends to happen, 
especially when people roll in like this and they want to take advantage of running programs or weightlifting programs or athletic performance enhancement programs when they're all like this and they can't move right. So next couple of videos, we'll look at a skeleton, we'll talk about muscles, we'll talk about range of motion, we'll talk about function together. I'm Eric Beard. Check out ericbeard.com for more information like this. Thanks so much for watching.